Well, hello again viewers, it's Peter Elgar again here with another of my treasures. This time it's a Yashica FR1. I thought I'd already done a video about it, but evidently I haven't. I got this free together with my contacts RTS from a gentleman who was going to dump them. And I managed to go over there quickly enough to save them. And they were all covered in dust. I had to clean it all up. Well, the Yashica takes the Yashica Stroke Contacts Fitting Lenses. And it, um, it's just as good as the contacts, I think, anyway. The, the uh, FR1 is a, one of a series of FR cameras. And they all suffer from one fault in that the frame counter breaks and sticks on start. And this is what's happened with this one. So when you wind it on, take a picture, the frame counter no longer works. So you have to guess how many you're taking, but at least it was free. So we'll have a look at the, the features of it. On the top, as I say, we have the non-working frame counter. We have the electronic shutter release, which is very sensitive. You don't have to press it hard. The dial here, you can set a shutter speed against a little white line which you require if you want to use manual exposure or you can turn it round this it goes that way all the way around until the word auto goes against it and then the shutter varies infinitely according to the aperture that you set on the lens at the front the other mark with a flash or electronic flash sitting here is one sixtieth of a second so that's a bit slow for the electronic flash synchronization now if you want to do a manual exposure you choose a shutter speed you roughly want here and then you look through the lens and you pull this little lever to the back here and in the viewfinder the needle jumps to the shutter speed that you've chosen and if it's slightly out you can turn the aperture ring until it coincides it's a sort of coincident image thing and I have used it on manual but I've used it a lot on automatic as well now on automatic setting there is a exposure compensation dial as on all these electronic cameras it's on one times at the moment you change it by pressing this little thing there and it goes to two times or four times. Two times and four times is when you've got it on snow. And then when you want to give it less, you go to one half time or one quarter time. That's when you're shooting on a stage and there's loads of spotlit performers and you've got a very black background, you put that to minus usually, or you're shooting something which is very, very black, and you don't want it to be overexposed. You choose your film sensitivity here with a little line just by pressing that again. No, you lift it up, don't you? That's it. Turn the little white line. They're all slightly different. Sometimes you press it, sometimes you pull it. Yeah, that's on 200 ASA now. Now there's a delayed action on the front and we'll wind it on and we'll take it off automatic. This was a bit stiff because it hadn't been used. Pull it down, 10 seconds delay, the shutter should go. Well, it test, I tested it a little while ago, there it's gone now. Now here we have a useful thing which is a 3mm coaxial flash plug which I like to use with my Mecha Blitz flashes, but you've also got, mustn't lose the little dust cap, you've also got a hot shoe on the top, you can slide a flash into there. Now this lens is a 28mm wide angle, maximum aperture of 2.8, the Yashica ML lens, that's supposed to be a good lens, and it is sharp, I've taken pictures with it, if you want to see the depth of field for whichever aperture you've chosen light on the contacts that's the one you press 
and the aperture closes down. Now, when I got it, all the inside was all gone rotten. I had to renew all these seals along there and along there, and the, look, the foam here had been renewed with some cheap foam. The back is detachable. Here we are, under the back. You can see the action of the shutter. We put it on one, one second. Here we are. We'll open it to 2.8. There we are. You can see the hole of the aperture of your lens. Now to, to get rid of the lens, you press a little button here, which is not all that easy to do. But there we are. There's the throat of the camera. Now inside is renewed seals, not the seals, the mirror bumper foam. And I had to renew that foam, it's all gone rotten. Now the standard lens that comes with it is a 50 millimeter. So you put red dot to red dot, twist it. And that's a 50 millimeter DSB 1.9 lens and that is very sharp it's all usable at 1.9 as well so we'll take that one off and also with it came the Yashica 200 millimeter zoom 80 to 200 red dot to red dot there we are now you've got your zoom on now and that, that's taken some quite good shots it's a very sharp lens it's an aperture f4 and it is usable at f4 200 millimeter maximum aperture 80 80 millimeter minimum focal length to 200 millimeter focal length and you push and pull to zoom it like that and i've done some good results it also came with it was the yashica winder which takes loads and loads of batteries and you have to get them fitted in the right way. Now this is exactly the same as the contacts. You have to fit these batteries in following the diagram. Here we have a diagram here on the back and sometimes some of them upside down and I couldn't fathom out first of all which way round they went. But as in the contacts, you've got to have positive there and negative there for it to fit. And there's a little lip. Now there's a little lip. And you fit it in your battery holder with a little lip like that. And then you can close it after you've screwed that onto the base of your camera. It's not all that easy screwing it onto the base of your camera We'll see if we can take the lens off. We haven't drop anything. Won't we'll get it free again. You <coughs> line it up with the drive shaft here, and this is sort of a key. Now you touch that in there. Turn the little key. And if you're lucky, and you've lined it up correctly, very gently, you must not force anything. All the connections are now connected and you can close that battery holder so it's not closing now. Maybe I'll put it in the wrong way. <laughs> there we are. Would you believe? Oh, the little keys sticking up, that's why. Now, I haven't used it for a while, I've forgotten how it all goes. There we are, snap it shut. Then you switch on the winder to the word on and it wound on. Then you can press the release and the winder works. Look at that. I've taken quite a few shots with the winder, it all works. But it's quite heavy on batteries. It takes six batteries. That's on half a second. We'll put it to a thousandth of a second. Very quick, look at that. It all works lovely. The only problem is, as I said, the frame counter doesn't work. 
Now if you come to the end of your film and you've got your winder attached, you push this little lever here, or push it or pull it, and it should push up the little pin in the base so that you can rewind your film back into the cassette again like that using your rewind knob so um i've taken some quite good shots with it there's an electronic release here which fits the contacts there on the winder for an electronic shutter release and there's one here as well with a little cover on it there we are there and I've, I've never actually used that one, but I have used the one on the contacts, RTS 2 quartz I've got. So we leave that one covered. But the FR1 is quite a good camera. It's solidly made. And the only problem is the leatherette sometimes goes rotten on these FR series, but this one's good. And the frame counter doesn't work. But I haven't taken some good snaps with it, so... I hope you've enjoyed this short dissertation on the Yashica FR1. Thanks for viewing and I hope you look at some of my other videos.